I want to welcome you to the 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. session of the 2016 Open Simulator Community Conference. This session is entitled Google Maps and the Panoramas in Immersive VR Environments, which takes a look at how mixing 3D content with real-world geolocated visual cues enhances the knowledge a person acquires during a virtual training. Um, before I introduce our speaker, I want to remind you that you can uh, get our in-world, for our in-world and our web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag of hashtag OSCC16. So up next, our speaker is Ramush Ramla, who is the lead designer of Resmala a rapid virtual world building company for diverse training applications. He has more than a decade of experience in human computer interfaces and VR application research and development. Also, Ramesh is the CEO and CTO of Deep Semaphore LLC, a simulations and e-learning company. Ramesh, I wanna welcome you to OSC 16, OSCC 16, and I pass our virtual mic to you. Thank you. Um, very happy to be here. Um, yes, um, I hope everyone had a good lunch. Uh, at least I had one just now. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I wanted to share uh, my uh, latest, uh, well, our latest uh, experiments with uh, Google Maps and Google Street Maps and explain the motivation behind it. Um, um, okay, and uh, so so let, let's have a look. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Um, there's something that I that I was thinking about um, in terms of applications and um, content generation in virtual environments. What I found is that. Um, And, and try to, you know, basically create skyboxes. Okay, and, uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with skyboxes, with textures inside the, the faces, and it just gives you a, a sense of the panorama. That's that's you know, everybody knows about that. And and we thought, okay, let's let's start doing this. So so just to use I, uh, to use this term, maybe uh, augmented virtual reality is uh, how we we try to augment virtual world content with direct real-world imagery data. Um, so, so basically what we were trying to do is uh, instead of, uh, you know, finding the textures and then manually adding them, And uh, at this point in my talk, I, I, I have to introduce uh, the Resmila system. I won't, I won't, I will do it a little bit quickly so that you get a sense of how we actually, uh, how the Google Street Maps actually works with with the Resmila system, which is um, basically um, 
it's an application that provides uh, three functionalities. Um, uh, it allows you to create large-scale virtual uh, scenes, um, and uh, that is, it allows you to control what happens in that environment, all from, from a control room kind of setting. And you can also monitor what's happening uh, in, in the virtual environment on the board. That's uh, the, the, the third leg of the whole application. So uh, it's, it's got like three main functionalities. Um, so basically you have a board and people sit around it. And, and if you go to my booth uh, later on, uh, there is a landmark that would send you out to, uh, to one uh, region that actually has the system out. Um, or if anyone wants to experiment and, and try things out. Um, so John and, 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 and I, what we did is we spent a lot of time trying to build a system that would allow a subject matter expert to create uh, a, a training environment just by, by selecting objects from, from a library and, and placing it on the board and, um, and, and you, you, know, you generate the, the, the large scale environment you know, just outside the control room, basically. So uh, these objects, um, you know, the, can can uh, have different, uh, you know, types. You have static objects that that are like trees and and uh, buildings and things like that, and you have you know scripted objects that can also be part of the library. And all all these whole range of objects are accessible through um, through a visual database. You just you know uh, get to to uh, <coughs> to browse the database uh, inside the control room and pick the objects that you need and place on the board. Okay. So we use those, this mainly for the, the one defining feature of, of our application is that it's, it's, it, it allows you to generate content collaboratively with all the students inside the classroom. And as I mentioned, there are different types of objects in the library. You can have static objects or just like an object that you can pick from that set of objects in the library and you can place it anywhere on the board okay um, I should mention that we have another object which is called a, a, a Google Street uh, map uh, object it's not it's not the cube object it's, it's different it just allows you to place a Google map on the board and that map would be magnified and placed on, on, on the region, okay? And, and that's where the whole exercise is, is going to take place, okay? And on that region, you can actually place your buildings, et cetera. Um, so we have kind of a hybrid setting where you have objects. Um, uh, you, you can actually have any location on the planet. You type in in a, in a dialog box, the system allows you to do that, and it automatically finds, you know, the right images to display, ranging from the maps, uh, Google Maps, or, or even the street views, and and textures the, the 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 cube so that when you place the cube and even move it along anywhere on the map, the pictures get updated. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the one thing with uh, our approach is, uh, you know, one of the limitations we had is that, of course, we are using Moab to display those Google Street View maps. And 
we were limited by the number of MOAP surfaces that can be um, displayed uh, at one point, um, you know, uh, at a given time. So right now it's around, you know, the more we can push it, at least with our machines that, that are able to render them, in our experiment, maybe you'll get away with eight or nine uh, concurrent more displaying uh, these street views or, or, or the map concurrently. So, so there is, you know, that, that's one of the limitations. Okay. Um, let me see if I missed anything here. All right. So let's be moving on to the next uh, slide. So, so as I said, um, wh when you have the, the Google Street View uh, cube, um, which is, you know, at a, at a given location that you have placed there, you can actually have people moving together in, in, into that, that, that space and, uh, and uh, interact with each other and collaborate and talk about, about you know, real-world situations. Um, the way we design the whole system is kind of, uh, there, there are many different aspects to it. So our, this cube also in itself provides a lot of functionalities because it is uh, what we call a malleable link set in itself. So um, if you see the cones that are placed uh, on, 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 on this, uh, uh, in, in this picture, we could also raise different types of objects and place it, you know, uh, and people can play around with uh, with uh, objects within the cube itself. So we can have, um, you know, a um, collaborative activities beyond, you know, just speaking about uh, situations within that shared space. And um, all right, so it's 46, uh, 12, 46 here. So I'm going to move to the next slide. Uh, the other way you can use, um, you know, the Google Street View Maps is that you can actually um, not have them be geolocated because in the previous experiment, in the previous example, we showed how we could actually move the cube on the map, which is uh, displayed over a whole region, and the cube gets updated. You can use any number of cubes, by the way, um, and and the textures that get displayed are determined by their, their location on the map. But you can also have, you know, just a room, uh, a, a, a cube that's in a specific position, and you have a search function, you type in, you know, the coordinates of the place you want to actually render, and, uh, and that would just appear around you. And um, th th there is uh, a demo in, in the sandbox area, um, you know, you can just go there and don't forget to sign in. There's a little computer on, on a platform and you have to sign in first before you can start, you know, clicking on the bigger icon on screen and launch, uh, you know, the blue dialog box. And there are, I think, about 200 interesting places that you can uh, look at and, 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 you know, check things out. And, uh, you know, that's... that's uh, that, that, that's in a situation where you want to use, um, you know, the, you don't, you, you don't need, um, you know, you don't have the Resmila system, but you just want to use the, the, the Street View Map object on its own independently, and, and it could be useful. Uh, the other thing that we have uh, added, um, I mentioned my label link sets, but in the afternoon, uh, well, in a few hours, uh, I have another talk that will be talking about this. But uh, in this cube, I'm just giving an example. Uh, we we have uh, you know the concept of interactive hotspots. When when you click on a, on a hotspot, that actually allows you to do a number of things. One is that you could actually click on a hotspot on an object, and that would cause um, a, a, URL, a URL to display uh, on a specific screen. Um, you know to tell to give additional or more detailed information about whatever you clicked. Um, the other thing is uh, you can also use hotspots like on a map in this example. So we are in the White House um, and uh, I have placed the map on the floor. And what you do is you can just, you know, uh, click on, on the floor 
and on, on those red dots, which are hotspots, and that's going to, um, you know, to load um, the, the, the various um, appropriate um, street view maps or panoramas, rather, in this case, and, and have them displayed all, all around. And, uh, and uh, you know, so I've just uh, run through these slides very quickly because I'm always, um, you know, trying to make sure that I'm on time. It's been, and uh, what, what I can speak of uh, about a little bit now is that uh, there are challenges when you use uh, street view maps or panoramas from Google uh, in the sense that um, the in the sense that, uh, just uh, just give me a second here. Um, the 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 format changes all the time, uh, very frequently, and and that becomes difficult. Um, you know, to to actually try to keep up with uh, with what they are doing on 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 their end, and uh, we just uh, had one problem recently that I found was that the panoramas that, that people can create before 2015. So if you if you go there and you take uh, anywhere on, on on the planet and creates and you create your 360 panorama and upload it on Google Maps, now the format has changed, and that's why the 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 surround views that I'm, I'm including in this example that you will find on the sandbox are from 2015. Uh, so those are the, you know, the traditional things that that you run, you know, into when you have to use, well, we can't do otherwise. You know, you, there's an ecosystem and you have to really be in tune with what's happening. And, uh, and I think if more people use, um, you know, what, what we are offering, we can as a group try to uh, to participate a little bit on the Google forum and try to get them um, you know and try to get them um, maybe streamline their you know their, their their services their apis a little bit more and stabilize it so that people like us can actually have uh, you know better opportunities for for developing um, you know applications that can be used over uh, you know, in, in a more stable stable way. Um, so, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, do ask. I try to to uh, to uh, to run uh, uh, you know through very very quickly, and uh, you know just just because I didn't want to uh, um, to. And I said in the beginning, I want to thank everybody on my team, um, and uh, you know we really. The kind of programming that we are doing is really, 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 you know, pushing LSL right, way over its limit, especially the, the malleable link sets, etc. And, and, and John Hopkins has, has done a, a really a great job in, in, in trying to, uh, to, to bypass a lot of the LSL limitations. And um, so I want to really thank everybody on my team. Um, for for what we are able to do, to, to and and to answer some of the questions, uh -oh. uh, my interest is uh, to make sure that we make everything that we are making as available as soon as possible. The only reason why we don't do it depends on, on a number of factors. One of them is that we want to make sure that things work properly in a very stable way before we push it out, and the mm -hmm. second. Second, second thing is I, I just want to make sure that you know it's affordable and we can do it in a sustainable way, because, yeah, thanks. Yeah, Thank Ramesh, this was fantastic presentation. I think everybody here wants to run over and try this out. It is, it looks amazing, and I I think that interaction, like you said, of the different things from the panoramas to the street views are going to be a lot of fun to try out. I can't wait to go to the White House and look in the cinema room. <laughs> All right. I want to remind the audience, uh, you can see what's coming up uh, on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Uh, the following, following this session, the next session will begin at 10 a.m. And it's entitled The Future of the Metaverse, Blueprints for the Evolution of Virtual Worlds. Um, so we're going to take a 
quick break to switch out our, our guests and our speakers, and we will uh, start presently in about six minutes. So if, um, thank you very much. All right. Thank you.